Uh, there's been a long rumored deal in the NBA. The Utah Jazz are a tanking franchise. Uh, they have a young player in Lowry Markkinen who is coveted around the league, including by the Golden State Warriors. So Warriors fans are, you know, they're going back and forth on this. The rumored deal that's out there is Lowry Markkinen to Golden State, and the Jazz are asking for. Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, Brandon Pajemski, and draft picks, which is quite the haul. Yeah. Uh, and Golden State has been very hesitant to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, is Joe Lacob calling that, uh, that package that is being suggested by the Jazz illogical? Is that who he's talking about? Uh, I would, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yes. That, that that is far too much to ask for when it comes to Lori Markkinen. Lori Markkinen would be a good ad, but I'm not going to sacrifice the farm for a player like that. And the, re and the reason why I think these cuts, um, and there are more from Joe Lacob about this, is because it, it's not as if he's talking about the Phoenix Suns, but at the same time, it sounds like it. Because this is an owner now who has kind of reversed his course about, aprons and money. This is a guy that just kind of oversaw a uh, kind of a contentious, painful divorce from Clay Thompson. Yeah, because it, it, it kind of made sense for the Warriors to do that. And some people, I believe the Warriors got better. Yes, it's painful to move on from one of your longtime stars, but he's mm -hmm. in Dallas now. How they've been able to bounce back with Kyle Anderson and Buddy Heald and others, they might be better equipped. They might be deeper than they were. A year ago, I, I, that unfortunately, that's the only audio I have okay, yeah, from, from Joe Lacob. Yeah, but. no, 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 no. I understand. I understand that uh, he went on and on to say what because he got into detail about that package of players uh -huh. that the Jazz apparently want for Lori Marketing. Yes. and he said at some point in time, you cannot, in good conscience, conscience as an NBA owner, trade off all your young players, which is exactly what happened here. It did. I mean, and we go back to that. February 2023 trade mm -hmm. when the Suns shipped off, you know, Mikel Bridges, yep. who's on a very, very friendly contract yeah. now with a team that's going to compete for that's a championship. Right. Cam that's Johnson right. just got an extension, but uh, the Suns got older and they put, I keep using the phrase, they put their eggs mm -hmm. in a basket. Um, and the Warriors are unwilling to do that with a group of players now that they've identified as part of their future moving yeah. forward, it's it's six of one, half dozen the other. But it, it, He said, uh, he, this is this is the quote in, in written form. Quote, we want to be as great as we possibly can. The caveat is that we can't bankrupt the team in an unbelievably dumb way for a decade. You can't bankrupt the entire team's future to go for one year because it's very, very hard to win. Even if we have the best team, you can sustain an injury. It's usually what happens and somebody else wins. So within reason, we're going to always try to do whatever we can can to win not just for Steph but for me for everybody for our fans blah 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 so again I think this is what you're talking about here with Joe Lacob it is a guy that's making it very clear he's pivoting from what I think the previous stance was which was the buy everything pay everybody mm -hmm. let's let's keep this thing going and, and again I, I think when you look at the Phoenix Suns this is the needle that they've got a thread here if, if you get a championship out of this group, I don't think anybody would care about the dip that's coming, right? It's the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's the Diamondbacks, the checkbook championship that people were, were complaining about with, with Jerry Colangelo. The dip that came after that wasn't real enjoyable for the people that run the team, but no. in retrospect, did it matter to us? Right. Of course And not. it's the things the Suns didn't do yep. in that Amari Stottlemyre right. year when they let who, him Mari go. Who? who? Amari who? Yeah. So, Sorry, Amari but, Right, right. So, so again, so now in the in the case of Matt Ishbia, you've got a guy that came in, got very aggressive, did trade off all the future assets, exactly what Joe Lacob says you can't do in the NBA. If you get the title, it's all well and good. I, I, but if you don't, What's what's the future going to look like for us? Perspective and experience mean something here because, let's face it, after that first run of titles when Kevin Durant left and Joe Lacob talked about Kevin Durant leaving and how painful that was and um, how he says he'll never say a bad word about Kevin Durant for what he brought to the Golden State Warriors. But when, when Durant left, there was a, a period of flailing by the Golden State Warriors. And Joe Lacob 
He went into the luxury tax hell long before Matt Ishbia was even an owner. Indeed. You remember the Kelly Oubre signing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And how yeah. much money that cost the Golden That's State right. Warriors in a in what was a move that was a flailing move. And Kelly Oubre Jr. did not work out for them. It's worked out pretty well in Philadelphia. And if you oh, But you also have to consider too, they already had three titles in their back yeah. pocket. Mm-hmm. So, so for, it's real easy to pull the plug now like that. It's yep. very easy to dig your heels in and save mm-hmm. this, and especially now because they still have a superstar in Steph Curry who's shown no signs of, of dipping. And the, uh, he, He's still playing at a high level. The other funny thing is as of a, a few years ago, like two, three years ago, the Warriors were sort of priding themselves that they were going to be riding two parallel timelines at the same time. They were going to win with yes. their stars, but they were building it around their young stars, Jordan Poole and James Wiseman. Yes, These were the future of the team. Neither of those players are on the team anymore, so they already changed that philosophy with those guys, and now they have this new crop that they are supposedly can't get rid of. Yeah, nobody wants to admit it in, in within the NBA, but there's like 80% luck involved in the draft. And you're exactly right, Jarrett. When it was Wiseman at number two, they swung wildly and missed on that one. And they actually went down the road of paying Jordan Poole. Right. They gave that him was a their, massive that was the, extension. That was the next Steph Curry for their team. And they were wrong on that, too. But then they followed it up with the luck of finding a Jonathan Kaminga, who was very raw when he came into the league. Brandon Pajemski was not a big-time name. And actually, this time last year was stinking it up in the Vegas Summer yeah. League, and he can play, mm-hmm. and Moses Moody is developing. So they had a little bit of good fortune, too. Yeah. But it is interesting Well, because you can certainly right. apply those comments to what the Suns have done and are doing. Well, and and I think you can also question the, the sincerity of these comments based on the fact that, A, he's won a lot, yes. and now he's tired of losing money. It's, it's a mixture of both. The other difference also, though, is that, like, if – the, the Warriors went all in, it would be to try to win right now with Steph Curry because the window for Steph Curry is only maybe two more years or three more years or something. When the Suns did it, it was building around Devin Booker, who was just getting into his prime, and you figured the window to win with him was another decade. So they didn't need necessarily to go all in right at that moment and you know trade everything away to try to win that, that year. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how... You know, we don't know how this shakes out with, with Kevin Durant and this totally revamped roster. Mm-hmm. But there's a chance, Bick, that we look back at the 2021 Suns and scratch our heads on, wow, how did that team make it to the finals? Yeah, but did everything the, just come, everything no, just lined up. The like, next year, they, they won 64 games or yeah, whatever. I guess. They were the best team in the NBA by far. And then they all got COVID or whatever in the playoffs, whatever you want to believe. Yeah, I guess that's a better way to put so it. So it's is not like the, they, the finals run was probably ahead of schedule. Yeah, they were really good the next year. So it's not like to say that it was a one hit wonder, which is why they weren't drafted yesterday. Vote now, Bickley and Ursula Murata. <laughs> you know what we didn't pick in that? I could have gone totally meta and picked the wonders from that thing you do. A whole movie about one hit wonders. That's true. One of my boy. favorite movies of all time. <laughs> I think I missed it. I messed up on that one. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.